principal bassist of the in Eastern Connecticut Symphony Orchestra, and I'm here to show you the instrument that I play, the double bass, as well as take you through some of the things that it's capable of doing and the different types of sounds it can produce. Uh, so just real quick, a brief overview of how I came to choose playing this instrument. Um, I actually started playing piano when I was about five years old, and to be honest, I didn't really enjoy playing it. Um, I just never really made sense to me, and I always got frustrated with it, but I did learn a lot from it, and all the basic music knowledge of how to read music, how to play rhythms, all that, really came in handy when I started learning to play the bass. Uh, so then I kept learning piano, and then when I got to fourth and fifth grade, my elementary school had a strings program. And then when I was in fifth grade, my dad suggested that I try out this huge instrument. And that's because he had played electric bass when he was in high school. He was in a rock band, and he had a lot of fun playing that instrument and learning how to play it. So he thought I would also have fun with it. And it turns out he was right. I loved playing this instrument from the very start of learning how to play it. And I've always just wanted to get better and better at it, and I always just really like the sound of it. So if there's ever an instrument that you're interested in playing, or you want to try out some other thing, um, I'd suggest go for it, because uh, even if it's as simple as you think it looks cool, or something looks cool on stage playing it, or it sounds cool, um, it's more of a, enough of a reason to try it out, and you'll probably end up loving it, and you'll learn something from it. So, yeah, and actually one of the things my dad told me when I was thinking about playing the bass was he was saying how the bass is so important in a lot of genres of music. So like you can play in a rock band, you can play pop music on electric bass or something, um, you can play in a jazz band, you can be in a bluegrass group, and obviously you can play an orchestra like I do, playing classical music. So it's just this really versatile instrument that fits into any genre of music that you want to play. Um, so yeah, if you're ever thinking about playing bass, that's a good reason. That's why I chose to play bass, and I've loved it ever since. So now, let me introduce some of the different sounds that the bass can make. Um, in the beginning of the video, you heard me playing a pretty famous piece. You've probably heard it somewhere before. And that's the prelude from Bach's first cello suite. And the title suggests that it's, it's played by cello, obviously. But on bass, we play it a lot, pretty frequently. Um, and it showcases how we're able to play all these higher notes and sound really lyrical and almost like a cello. Um, the bass is commonly associated with being like this low sounding dark instrument, but we do have that high range and we're able to kind of mimic what a cello can do. And sometimes you can go even higher and play something like a violin or some wind instrument can do. Um, so we have that option, but then we have this dark low end. And to show that to you, let me play another famous piece that you might recognize. Anyways, um, so yeah, as you just saw, I can play these really low dark notes, and I also have this like middle range over here, and then I have that high range like you heard earlier. Uh, and actually, talking about the low end, usually basses only go down to that note, the E, but then on some basses you'll see this weird thing here, and this is called an extension, and uh, actually no other string instruments have this, only basses have this. But what an extension does is, so I have this E, but if I open it up, I can go even lower. So E, E, C is as low as I can go. So I just have further options going way down low. So that's kind of the two worlds that I can be in in the space. So while we're on the topic of animals, since I just played Jaws and that one other shark song that everybody's probably tired of by now, um, there's actually another animal that the bass is commonly associated with, and that's because of a French composer named Cézanne. And he wrote a piece called Carnival of the Animals, where each movement of the piece showcases a specific animal played by a specific instrument or instrument family in the orchestra. 
So, for example, we've got the cellos playing the theme of the swan, and we've also got other animals like the kangaroo or the tortoise. And then this, the bass gets assigned this huge, clunky, heavy, slow-moving animal. And I'm going to play it for you, and let's see if you can guess what it is from, from how it sounds. So here's the piece. guess that the animal of the piece is an elephant. Okay, good job. You guess the animal right, it is an elephant, and I guess I did a good job of sounding like an elephant, which I don't know how I should feel about that. But yeah, so we've heard that low end of the bass, we've heard that middle range, and then we've heard that high end. And actually, the examples I've given you so far are examples of the bass playing a melody, but then in orchestra, we rarely get the melody of the basses. Instead, we get this supporting role as the other instruments play the melody. You'll usually hear it in like the violins or the cellos or the winds. And we have like the supporting bass line. Uh, so I'm going to play a few excerpts from famous orchestra pieces that you've definitely heard before somewhere. Um, but maybe you haven't really noticed the bass part. So I'm going to play those bass parts, and we'll see if you recognize what those pieces are. And if you don't, maybe ask your teacher, and maybe they can help you out. So here are the excerpts. So here's excerpt one. <laughs> recognize the song that that's called then good job if you recognize if you know the name of the symphony that it's from then even better and then here's excerpt number two <laughs> shown you so far uh, all the general things that the bass is capable of doing from playing all the low end notes and playing the bass line from having like this middle register like you heard in the elephant 
And then being able to play up high, playing you know, these high melodies that usually the violins or viol the violas or cellos would have. Um, so since we can't have rehearsals right now like we usually do, where I can meet up with other violinists or cellists or violists or even the winds, um, I've kind of had this side project that I've been working on where I work on recording myself playing all these different parts and then mashing them together into one video. So I'm going to show you a video of something I've been working on. It's not complete yet. I'm pretty sure I made a mistake in some part of the video because something sounds weird, but just ignore that. Um, but this is a recording of Mahler's Adagietto that I made. It's from his Fifth Symphony, and it's this slow, beautiful movement where it showcases all the strings plus a harp. Um, but let's see, well, as you're listening to it, try to pick out which line is which. Um, it all sounds like a bass playing it, obviously, but try to identify which line the, I'm trying to play, like which which part of the video is the violin part, which part is the viola part, which part's the cello part, and then the last part is kind of a mis mishmash of the bass part and like the harp, so all these accompanied voices that kind of fit in with the other voices. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy what I've made. Thank you.